I'm pleased to sponsor the alternative interview. So, Bristol Rovers are knocking on the door. What 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 happened there? I uh, got a call from my agent saying, "Look, Bristol Rovers are interested. Um, did you go there?" And I said, uh, "Yeah, I would, but it depends on obviously what they're saying, how much they're offering, my role in the team, etc. There's so many factors you have to take into consideration when you're leaving." And I remember Gary calling me into the office saying, look, there's been a bid for you. Um, I just have to tell you, we've rejected it. And I just went, all right. Because at, at that point, if I didn't move, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have cried. Like, you know what I mean? I wasn't fast. I was enjoying my football anyway. And then uh, I think he said to me, look, would you, would you sign a new deal here? And I said, yeah, obviously it depends on, again, what you're offering and where the club goes. Maybe if we get promoted, if we don't. There are so many different factors. So then I uh, ended up um, going home and then came in for training again the next day, said, oh, look, the bid's been accepted. So, and it was a decent amount of money for the club as well, uh, which probably shouldn't have, but in one way swayed me towards going because I knew the club would get a decent amount of money for me going. I think I had six months left on my deal, which isn't a lot in terms of football. So if I wanted to, I could have waited till the end of the season, gone on a free but I knew the club was getting a decent amount of money from it. And that was another factor which I took into consideration in terms of leaving. I wasn't leaving the club high and dry, I guess. They were getting a decent amount of money which they could put towards getting players in, which they did. I think they signed three or four players after I left and uh, better in the whole whole club in terms of everything, the stadium, whatever, whatever they put the money towards. So, um yeah, that ended up coming about. And then uh, I think I went in on the Friday and said goodbye to everyone. But no one actually knew that I was going because I didn't tell anyone. I just came in and said, look, boys, I'm, I've obviously got a bit accepted. I'm going to go up and have a medical, blah, blah, blah. And more than likely sign there. And um, I remember I think Coley. Coley was the last person I saw and he honestly nearly cried. Sham, Sham, Sham definitely cried. I remember Sham cried. It was just quite funny. I was like, "Why are you crying for? Grow up, me." Uh, so it was, it was a it was a sad time. Um, reluctantly, I went because, again, for me personally, it was a deal I couldn't turn down. Uh, for me, in many different aspects, and um, again, like I said, the club benefited from it as well. So I remember driving up. But I remember driving up thinking, "Should I just turn around and go back?" But then in football, you have to come out of your comfort zone. And I just remember just carrying on. I think I stopped at a service station thinking it was halfway, thinking I could just go back and say, oh, look, I don't want to don't want to go. But I remember I fully completed the drive. And then um, I got there and I remember thinking, I haven't met the manager yet. Like the manager hasn't rang me. Or that's, that's one thing which kind of made me want to turn around. Like the manager hadn't rang me. I hadn't heard from anyone from the club. I was literally just getting there. And they expected me to sign kind of thing. Normally, when you move a manager ring, you say, look, this is what our ideas of you, blah, blah, blah. And I just remember thinking, oh, the gaffer hasn't rang me here. Like, something's a bit off. But anyway, I get there. Again, get there. Gaffer's not there. But he was taking training. And then uh, done the medical. And then, yeah, signed. And I still hadn't met the gaffer. I was still thinking, something's not right here. Just in my head, I was thinking, could I just go back? But I'd already signed the papers. But, uh, yeah, ended up signing. And uh yeah, that was that was the end of my time at the shots for that for that moment in general. Yeah. So, what memories do we have of Bristol Rovers? Uh, Rovers, great club, massive club, fans, unreal. Uh, especially when the team's doing well, um, it was quite hard to get into that team because they had quite a solid structure already. So they had players that had been there three, four years under the same manager and. He trusted them. I guess that's the word to put it. Like he really trusted them in certain games, in certain aspects of the way they want to play. 
and the way they played was completely different to the way we played at Aldershot. It's a bit more direct, so a lot of second balls. And I remember same kind of thing with, with Kundai, finding the right club that want to play the right way. And um, I remember like starting and I'll be on the bench and then I come on. I thought I'd done all right. And then being on the bench again and you just think, oh, maybe I should have started this game. Maybe I should have started that game. But obviously every opportunity I had, it was trying to make an impact really. But I think the main thing I struggled with was probably at all the shots not big-headed, but I was one of the, the big players or top players that was uh, affecting game in, game out. And I'd gone from being up here to being a squad player. And that's something which I probably wasn't used to. I, at Watford, it was all right. Look, I understood. Look, there was like Troy Deeney, there was Forestieri, there was Vidra, there was literally internationals left, right and centre, people that have played in big leagues in Europe. And uh, yeah, the main thing is being like one of the top dogs to go in there and being like a squad player thinking, how am I going to break into this team? How am I going to break into this team? And I remember the last game of the season there, we played uh, South End away. And I started that game and I've done really well. And I remember thinking, all right, cool. Going into pre-season now, I need to nail down that spot because the gaffer said, look, that's the best game you've ever played for me. Take that into next season. So uh, that was the aim once that season ended. How can I take that last game into the next season? And... You, you went on loan, didn't you, the following season uh, at Lincoln? Yeah, yeah. So I ended up going to Lincoln. Uh, that pre-season was a bit hot and cold. I played I played as a striker, but a lone striker, which I hadn't done since I was probably 16, 17. And um, I remember the gaffer saying, look, you've got the qualities to be a good striker. I want to try you there. So he tried me there for... I think two, three games, but I was so isolated that nothing really happened. I couldn't really get involved in the game because I was so isolated up front on my own. And then uh, I think first game of the season, we played Peterborough away, came on, thought I'd done well there as well. I had a chance to score, I think got cleared off the line. And then I remember thinking, am I going to play? I remember thinking, am I going to play? And my agent had told me, look, there's interest on loan if you want to go on loan. So I went to the manager and said, look, is there, can I go on loan? He said, no, I don't want you to go on loan. I want you to stay here. You're a part of my plans. Blah, blah, blah. And I think the next two games, I wasn't in the squad at all. So I think I went back to him again, like, look, I've got a couple of clubs here that want to take me on loan. Can I go there? And he said, if, he said, I'll leave it up to you. I'd rather you stay. But if you feel like you want to go, then, then you can go. And Danny Cowley rang me that evening spoke in depth with me about what he wanted from me and how he wanted me to play, etc., and how the team wanted to play because we played against them in, in the National League and obviously done so well against them in, whenever we played them. So he said he remembers me, you know exactly how I play. He's watched so many clips of me. He came to watch me personally in certain games in the, the previous season. And uh, I ended up making a decision, look, I'm going to go to Lincoln, who were trying to get promoted at the time. So... I made that decision. It was early on in the season, but I, yeah, I made that decision to go there to try and play more games and kind of enjoy my football a bit more. I think I probably stopped enjoying football the way I did when I was at Aldershot. And just going back to that season that you left Aldershot, because of course you left in the January and you'd have been following the fortunes because they got to the playoff for a, a second season. Um, it was a different kind of uh, end to the season, really. And, and um, they, they got in, of course, they played Ebbsfleet and uh, lost on penalties. But uh, it, from afar, you'd been watching it from, from outside, looking in. But at the same time, you'd have been keeping in touch with all your colleagues from there and, uh, and, and believing they could have made it again. Oh, yeah, I was, I was number one cheerleader. I remember um, certain games. I think played Dagenham that, that year and I think they won away from home against Dagenham. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember finishing a game at Bristol and going straight on my phone. I think it was on BT, the night game. Went straight and watched it, the whole journey back from whatever game we were playing. Uh, I actually went to the playoff game uh, where we lost against Ebbsfleet. I was there mm -hmm. in the crowd. I was, went to the change rooms, wished everyone luck. I was literally cheerleader from afar. And um, I was willing the boys on to do it because, like I said, we were that year wiser than we were the year before. And uh, I feel like the team was stronger just because of that having that year of playing together. So I was hopeful, I was really hopeful that we went up and I remember just going to the game and thinking, oh, 
I had training the next day actually, so it was a Tuesday night. We we're in on the Wednesday, I think. It was one of the two. It was either it was a Wednesday and we we're in on the Thursday. But I remember going thinking, I'm gonna get home so late here, yeah, back to Bristol, and but I just wanted to be there with the boys and and like push them on. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, we lost on penalties. Obviously, penalties are lottery. You can't really do much about that again. But like I said it's un- unfortunately, it ended the way it did in terms of that season and two years both playoff defeats but it's that league is hard only one team automatically goes up anyway and I think that year they changed the format of the playoffs as well to right. yeah six teams Seven. Six yeah teams. yeah yeah, yeah. Something, something weird like that so it made it harder because it was literally just a one-off game the only thing we had in our favor was we finished higher in the league so we could play at home but yeah ended up ended up losing on penalties so again a bit disappointing the way it ended, even though I wasn't there, I was still felt a part of the team and literally suffered the way the boys suffered if they won or lost their game either way. I suppose it's the old easy word, hindsight and all that, but do you have any regrets about leaving and was it the right decision for you when you when you look back about your career? Uh, you always think if, what, but whatever. Like you said, hindsight is a wonderful thing, but um, do I regret leaving? Probably not, uh, but I do think about what would have happened if I stayed. Um, I do know one, one person doesn't make a team, a million percent one person doesn't make a team, but I feel like I could have affected games, I guess. I remember James Rowe ringing me saying, oh, look, since you left, we've only won two games out of, I think it was like 12 or something. There were so many draws involved there anyway. But I remember saying to him, look, there's one person doesn't make a team. Like, hopefully the boys bring it, bring it home. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah, I do. I do think about how we would have finished the season if I stayed and what would have happened. But I don't regret leaving. Though I wouldn't say I regret because everything financially, in terms of bettering my life and my family's mm-hmm. life, or the chance to test myself at a higher level, League One, which I hadn't played before. Obviously, I played a couple of games in the Championship, but there were substitute appearances, so it wasn't anything crazy but you were testing yourself against better players as well and that's what you want in football you want to push yourself all the shot I think not in a bad way was a comfort zone because I knew most games if I was fit I'd start and I'd play pretty well if I if I did play so um it wasn't a, yeah no I don't I, I wouldn't say I regret leaving but obviously I I don't regret leaving but I do because it was such a great place to have played football and enjoyed my football but everything happens for a reason and like you said you can't go back in time but yeah I'm grateful to all the shot and and everyone there from top to bottom for everything they've done for me as a person and in, in my career so far 